Ampere's law. Now we have a current carrying wire. First of all, here we can demonstrate the right hand rule. When we place our thumb in the direction of the current, the four fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see that the magnetic field is circulating around this loop. And uh, if I define the radial vector r from the center of the wire to the magnetic uh, to the point of interest where we have the magnetic field b as the radial vector r, and theta is the direction with respect to the horizontal here in the counterclockwise direction. Uh, due to the symmetry of the wire, the magnetic field lines are circles concentric with the wire lying on a plane that is perpendicular to the wire, as you can see here. So this actually implies that if this is in the page, here the magnetic field lines are coming out of the page, here the magnetic field lines are going into the page. So you can basically think about this part as uh, coming out and this part as going into the page. Okay, so uh, the right hand rule basically tells us the direction of the magnetic field. When we place our thumb along the di current direction, four fingers wrap in the direction of the field as you can see here. The field lines here have no beginning nor end. They form a closed loop. So uh, there is, and that basically is due to the fact that there are no magnetic monopoles. So you can think about this as a north-south, north-south following each other. Uh, so the field lines are pointing from north to south, north to south, like that. And uh, the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire at a radial distance r from its center is mu zero i over two pi r in theta hat direction. So this is the counterclockwise rotation. That's the direction I have defined theta hat to be. So the tangential direction is theta hat. That's a counterclockwise rotation. So the magnitude of this field is mu zero i over two pi r. It's the same everywhere on a circular path centered on the wire. Now, if I take this b dot ds integral, the line integral of the magnetic field around this closed path, I will have b ds cosine zero because uh, the the line, uh, the, the path and the magnet path vector and the magnetic field vector are in the same direction. So I will have uh, the B integral, closed loop integral of ds because B is a constant uh, at a radial distance r. And that magnetic field is basically uh, mu zero i divided by uh, 2 pi r. So we're going to uh, substitute for the magnetic field mu zero i divided by 2 pi r and the closed loop integral ds will give us just the circumference 2 pi r so 2 pi r's will cancel each other and we will be left with mu zero i so this tells us that the line integral b ds around any closed path equals mu zero times the current, where current is the total steady current passing through any surface <coughs> bounded by that closed path. So you can think of any, any closed uh, surface here. So this is the boundary of that surface. And uh, when I perform this line integral uh, along a closed path that is bounded by any closed surface like this or like this, I can have a three-dimensional surface. This could be hemisphere, for example. Uh, then I would have uh, the same answer, mu zero times the current enclosed. So this result, the closed path integral b dot ds is mu zero i enclosed, is known as Ampere's law. So this is Ampere's law. Here's an example. We have... Uh, three current carrying wires. One has current coming out of the page, one amps. Uh, another one has current going into the page, two amps. And another one has current going out of the page, five amps. Now, if I do this integral, closed path integral b dot ds for path A. Path A encloses basically all of these uh, current. So I will have six amps coming out of the page, two amps going into the page, uh, a net current of 4 amps uh, 
that's coming out of the page. So this is mu0 times i enclosed, mu0 times 1 amps and 5 amps coming out of the page, 2 amps going into the page. So this will be equal to 4 mu0. For the path B, if I look at the currents enclosed, I have 1 amp and 2 amps in the opposite direction. So this is going to be mu0 times 1 minus 2, which is minus mu0. For path C, which is this path here, I have 1 amps and 5 amps enclosed. So it's going to be 6 mu0, mu0 times 1 plus 5, it is 6 mu0. And for path D, that is this path, 5 amps and 2 amps in the opposite direction are enclosed. So this will be mu0 times 5 minus 2, 3 mu0. So I find that uh, my answer is greatest for path C. Uh, it's greater than the, the one for path A and then the one for path D and the one for path B. So that's how uh, the line integral changes uh, in between different paths, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we talked about um, the current carrying wire. The magnetic field created by that wire is found using the right-hand rule. The thumb of the right hand points in the direction of the current. The four fingers wrap in the direction of the magnetic field. The magnetic field is only a function of R, the radial distance from the center of the wire. It's mu zero I over two pi R. If we perform a line integral around this, uh, circular around this wire in, on a circular path, uh, we see that uh, this is going to be uh, mu zero I over two pi R multiplied with two pi R because R is a constant here. It comes out of the integral and this integral closed uh, path integral ds is the circumference two pi R. Two pi R's cancel, we reach mu zero I. The, in fact, the line integral bds around any closed path equals mu zero i, where i is the total steady current passing through any surface bounded by that closed path. This is known as Ampere's law. Um, in closer closed path integral bds is mu zero i enclosed. B dot product with ds is mu zero i enclosed. So if I look at one example here, for uh, three current carrying wires, for each path, I have to consider which of these wires are enclosed. For path A, so any closed surface that is bounded by this path will have a, a, will be enclosing the currents 1 amp, 5 amps coming out of the page, 2 amps into the page. So I would have 6 minus 2, 4 mu0 as the uh, answer for the closed path integral. And for B, I would have uh, 1 amps and 2 amps enclosed, so it is minus mu0. For C, I will have 1 amps and 5 amps enclosed, 6 mu0. And for D, I will have 5 amps and 2 amps in the opposite direction enclosed, giving me 3 mu0. And this allows me to find the uh, comparison between the path integrals along these four different paths.